This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to do a woven cable. Now people are always trying to find ways to do really wide dramatic cables on the knitting machine and you can do as wide a cable as you want and it's just a very beautiful dramatic cable. Wonderful centerpiece up the center of an Aran sweater or if you want you could do this all over. You need a multiple of four stitches because you're going to have these cables here that are four stitch wide cables at the bottom to begin. Then the next row you're only going to do um, one less of them, but you still need a multiple of four. Then you need a couple of rows to latch up on either side as a purl row. This can be done on any, any, any machine. I have worsted weight yarn on the Brother Bulky machine. Although I don't have to do it this way, I'm going to start by latching up the stitches just outside the cable. Now since I need a multiple of four stitches for this cable, I've decided to make my cable 16 stitches wide. So I am on needles number 8 left to 8 right for the cable and then this is needle number 9 where I did the latch stitch. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left hand side. I just reform these stitches so that they're knits as they face me but on the other side, which is the right side of the knitting, they'll show up as purl stitches, ditches on either side of my cable. Now I've set my row counter to 000, and I've got a few rows of knitting on. I'm ready to do my first cable. This is going to be every four rows you have to do something. So if you want, you can make yourself a cheat sheet with the row counter number, you could mark it 4, 8, 12, 16, multiples of 4, and what to do, but it's so very simple. You pick up the two stitches closest to this column on the right here where I just latched a stitch, and then you pick up the two stitches beside it, take two steps to the right, lay down the left stitches, then lay down the right stitches. and that's the first cable. Then you take the next two onto a tool, and the next two onto a tool, move over, put the left down first, then put the right down, and yes, it's a little tight, you have to pull, and then do the next two. But this is not too tight for a typical machine. Our needles are rigid, of course, we don't have loops slipping along on sticks like hand knitters. So we can still do this even though it's a little bit tight, but let me show you a little tip to help you with the first row after the cable. This is tension 8 by the way on my Brother 270. Now to make it a little easier to knit right after the cables, just bring them all out into hold. The machine is set on, on in, not hold. It's set to knit all the needles. And you see the tension on those needles pushing them together? Oops, those don't need to be in hold, but it won't do any harm. So now I'm going to knit four rows. And if you want, you can keep up with latching it up, or you can do it later, but I'm going to go ahead and latch this up to make it easier for you to see where everything is done. So that's the four stitches on the right, and I've got to latch four stitches on the left, four rows. So that defines my cable area, and now what I'm going to do differently is I'm starting over here where this column is and I'm skipping those two, and I'm going to put the next two on my tool, and my next tool on these two. Now I'm taking two steps to the left instead of to the right, and I'm laying down the right needles first. 
So this is a cross in the other direction from what we did before. And then I go and I get the next one. Move to the left instead of the right this time. And put your stitches on. And one more. I'm taking these four stitches and there are two more stitches before this next um, latched area, this next knit stitch. And I'll do the same thing with these. Sometimes a little downward pressure from the thumbnail helps you get them on because it is tight. But it's not so tight as to cause you real trouble. And then once again it's helpful if the cabled stitches can be pulled out. That way the machine only has to push back. It doesn't have to pull the needles out and push the needles back. And knit four rows. Now if you get interrupted you know that um, the next step is in a multiple of four. So you could look at your row counter and keep your place. I'm currently on row eight. And you're only repeating two different kinds of twists. There are the twists that use four groups of four, in my example where I have 16. But gosh, if you want to do this over 32 needles or 64 needles, that's fine, any multiple of four. And then there are the ones that only do it one less time. It does it over three twists, in my case. So I'm back to the first one. I'm going to take these rightmost two. I didn't latch up yet. And then I'm going to take the two beside them, and remember this was the move to the right row. So I'm putting down the needles on the right putting down stitches on the right needles first and then putting the stitches from the right over the top of those, making a cross in that direction. So it's right in front of left as the stitches face me. And I really should latch these up. I think it makes it easier for you watching the video to see where the stitches are that I'm moving if I have those two edges on. going to pull these out to hold because my machine will have an easier time knitting them through. Now since I said I was going to repeat those kinds, two kinds of twists, the one over four groups of four needles and then the one over three groups of four needles, now it's time for me to do the one over three groups. And the way that I could remember that, if I had been interrupted, is I could just look at the knitting and I can see one, two, three, four. So it's either four groups or it's three groups. And when you do the four groups, you move to the right with your transfer tools. And when you do the three groups, you move to the left. And I'm always looking for a way to help myself keep track of where I am and not mess things up. So that's my way of keeping track on this particular pattern. And you see how I deliberately skipped those two? I'm going to skip the two at the beginning and the end of my cable groups. The 
this is what makes it look woven. This change of direction and the change of which stitches get moved. And you can see me kind of wiggling it clumsily to get it all on the needles the way it belongs. So if you have to wiggle with it a little bit clumsily, you're in good company. I think we all struggle a little bit with stretching our yarn onto the needles when we're doing cables. So that will have been two repeats. I've got a big enough sample now, so I'm just going to go ahead and bind off and show you how this turned out. If you want to learn that nice chain edge cast off, that's in my beginner course. Now here's our finished cable.